Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Dan Sarto, co-founder and publisher of Animation World Network, and I'm excited to be here with a few industry legends who played a pivotal role in creating a fan-favorite holiday special in Ovana's first fully animated half-hour TV special, A Cosmic Christmas. Before I begin Hi, the introduction... Hello, everybody, and welcome. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> There's a troublemaker in every group. Um, Absolutely. Before I be Go ahead. <laughs> before I begin with introductions, we would like to take the time to acknowledge that the land we gather on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and we encourage you to reflect on the history, treaties, and traditional keepers of the land we inhabit. With that, we are joined today by children's animation legends, Clive Smith, John Celestri, Lenora Hume, and Bill Spears. Welcome, everyone. Thank Hello. You. Hi. Hi. Thank, thank you, Dan. Thank you. Um, thanks for joining us for this exclusive Q&A about A Cosmic Christmas. Before we dive into the specials production, and, and uh, I'm sure have a, a little raucous behind the scenes uh, fact-finding mission, uh, uh, hopefully you guys remember some of this stuff. We'd love, we'd love for everyone to share a bit about who you are, what did you do while you were working at Novana, and what are you up to now? Uh, Clive, why don't we start with you? You were, you were there from the very beginning. Well, the first question being, do we remember any of this stuff? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. I mean, we're talking 44 years since Cosmic was launched. So it's, um, yeah, it's been a long time. I actually watched the film um, yesterday. I hadn't seen it for a long time and it, it surprised me. It actually stood up, I mean, on a small screen. Um, I did watch it about five years ago in a theater and it was a disaster, I thought, because it was never made for the big screen. It was made for the small screen. And that was the level of the animation. That was the quality of the film. Anyway, what was the question again? What am I, what did we do at Nelvana? Um, <laughs> who, who are you and why are you here? Sort of every, well, at the beginning, it was sort of everything. You know, it was a startup. Patrick, Patrick Blubert, Michael Hirsch, and I started the company 50 years ago, I guess. It's the 50th, right? Mm -hmm. 50 years ago. In those days, we did everything. I had an animation background, so of course I got to do the drawings. And Patrick and Michael sort of ran around getting gigs and, and helping sort of build the corporate side of the company. But um, as things went on, I did a lot of the direction. I directed Cosmic and I directed a couple of the shorts after that, Devil of Daniel Mouth and Thanksgiving. Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet, yes, Juliet. yes, and that, yes. Um, and obviously rock and roll, the big feature that we did. And after that, I kind of um, started developing features. And also I started a, a, a breakout company called Bear Spots. And in that little unit, which was a little bit separate from the rest of the mainstream of the studio, we did commercials and special projects. I did a project for IMAX, actually actually for Omnimax, which is a whole other <laughs> thing that we could we should we should definitely talk about that at some point, which was brilliant. Anyway, um, yeah, it was you know it Nelvana was a startup. It was in the old days. It was it was what you would call now an incubator, because we built the studio with uh, slowly, gradually with a team of, of animators, new animators from Sheridan, um, people from a, around the globe joined us eventually. And, um, and we pretty much figured out how to do it because we didn't have, we, we had very primitive tools and there was nothing off, off the shelf that we could pull down and use. So we basically made it up as we went along. 
And that was the fun of it. And that's still what I like. That's still what life is all about. It's about inventing and, and creating something that hasn't been created before. That's what it's all about. What's the next question? <laughs> the, the, the next question is, John, John White, you introduce yourself. I'm John Celestri, and uh, I was at, at Novana in, uh, on Cosmic Christmas, and I animated Ma, um, uh, Mom, Dad, and Granny, and uh, uh, some of the, uh, the spacemen on that. Um, and uh, afterwards, we went on to working with, the, uh, with Clive and, and animating on the, the, uh, the five half-hour specials, you know, uh, and uh, Devil and Daniel Mouse, uh, uh, Please Don't, don't Eat the uh, Planet, uh, Romeo and Juliet, and uh, Easter Fever. I was uh, one of the sequence directors on Easter Fever, and then animated on uh, Rock and Rule, and uh, did uh, their, uh, it was um, Quad Hole, Mylar, and Cindy on that. And afterwards, I went on to Dragon's Lair and Space Ace, and you know, I left left uh, you know Canada, went to uh, the States, and worked on, uh, as I said, uh, uh, for Don Bluth, and then for Filmation, and uh, and so on and so forth. So, got it. Uh, got it. And um, um, Lenora, tell, why don't you tell us about yourself? All right. Well, I came into animation through a different channel, and which was uh, camera work. And uh, Nelvana took uh, a leap of faith with me with a background in computer science at the time, and uh, also still photography. They figured that someone with those skills, uh, sort of understanding how to do a zoom and, a, and a, you know, arcs and curves and things like that, that I would be able to figure it out. So I was trained there. Um, you know, one of the very early stages, I started in 1976, so did a couple of little projects that were sort of leading up to Cosmic Christmas. And I went eight years in camera all the way through to the end of Rock and Roll, um, which was an absolutely fantastic experience and just took the skills that I had and mushed them together into this, you know, phenomenal career. Um, and then I went from Nelvana after 14 years at Nelvana, I was hired by Disney to go down and uh, do production for Disney. When in their startup television animation unit, I did that for 17 years, took early retirement and then went to England uh, after retiring to hit entertainment, which had been bought by a private equity company and they wondered what the heck they bought and hired me to go over and take a look and sort it out and get it sold. Uh, did that and then came home and retired again and I've been consulting doing projects that I like. Um, main client is a French company, uh, animation company called Team Toe right now and we do fantastic work either our own IP as well as um, service work so it's been a great career many years. Got it. Um, Yay! <laughs> um, last but not least, Bill, why don't you uh, uh, why don't you share with us a little bit about uh, who you are and what you've done? All right. Um, well, well, let's start with Cosmic Christmas. That was the first show that I worked on full time as an animator after Sheridan College, um, and it was. It was so exciting at that time. It really was because we really did feel like pioneers doing that because so many of us were just fresh out of Sheridan College uh, and, and learning as we went along. Um, after that, um, I did years of back and forth between Montreal and Toronto and Ottawa and Toronto and Montreal. Uh, was back at Nelvana for uh, Rock and Roll. Uh, another just terrific time, um, a real thrill to work on that. Um, and then some more back and forth between Montreal and Toronto. Worked on uh, Ewoks, development for Ewoks, I think, and uh, director of animation on Get Along Gang. Uh, and then uh, my back and forths took me to uh, Paris and London and Berlin. Uh, and so then it was 
back and forth between those places and Toronto and Montreal and Paris and London and Berlin. So I was really uh, taking advantage of my uh, air miles. <laughs> right. And uh, that, that, that pretty much defined my career. And then I've been back here in Toronto for the past 15 years, uh, working and directing a TV series. Great. Um, Novon is celebrating its 50, uh, 50 years of creating award-winning content for kids, which is no small feat in this business. Um, a huge achievement. You've all played a part in, in the building of the studio's foundation. I want to I want to kind of, uh, uh, Bill, I'm going to stick with you and, and start. What was it like working at Novana in the early days? And what do you think the secret to the studio's success has been? <laughs> um, Wow. Well, okay. What it was like, it certainly, it was about teamwork. And I, I always re referred to Nelvana as at that time was the little studio that could, and it was just, we just had a lot of gumption. Um, and, you know, of course, uh, Patrick Clive and Michael were key figures in that. Um, but it really, uh, the team of people, we, I, I don't know. We just had a lot of nerve. Uh, to just jump in there and do this. And we really did feel like we were taking animation, especially Canadian animation, onto the next, the next level, that we were the new generation. We really felt like the new generation. Got it. Um, Lenora, what about, uh, what about for you? Well, you know, I think one of the six, I mean, the obvious success is the, the three principles. And when you take a look at their skill set, like Clive comes to it from art and music and animation. Um, you know, Patrick and Michael studied film, but sort of they focused one sort of towards the business side and the other one sort of more into production. So I learned a lot from production, but I learned a lot from all of them. And I think that combination and just, it was, it was this little engine that could, it was a group of people who whatever problem came our way, because we didn't have a lot of means at the time. We didn't have a lot of great equipment. We just, we used what we had and did what we could with what we had. And it just made this incredible energy uh, amongst the teams of people helping people, you know, if I didn't have a camera, a scene to shoot in camera, I'd go into the ink and paint department and paint to help, you know, move it along. Right. Um, Can I ask Lenora something here? Can go I for it. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I am a rule breaker. I'm sorry. Do you remember the rubber band, the the uh, the, the 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 elastic bandstand? Oh, yes. It well, was boat me, anchors me, and elastic let, bands. Let me, let me explain that we didn't have a proper camera. When Lenora first came on board, we didn't have a proper Oxberry, which, is the sta which was the standard or is the standard, I suppose, still for shooting film um, animation. We, had, we couldn't afford one. And Patrick and I found this guy who built um, blimps and... What else did he? Something, something to do else. with boats. It was, there were boat was parts in it for sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we, in, we insisted that this guy could in fact build an animation stand for us. And we drew it out. We said, this is what it's supposed to do. And this is how it works. And for about six months, Patrick and I would travel from downtown Toronto all the way up to North York, where his studio warehouse was where he's building these things and we'd see it every couple of weeks and it was getting further but finally we took possession of it and we used this stand for i think for a good chunk of cosmic christmas the thing about it was why we called it the elastic band stand was because all the controls were in fact rubber bands so <laughs> there were so it wasn't quite precise. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, That's funny. part um, part of the invention. Yeah. Um, Clive, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with you uh, uh, first to talk a little to talk about how the project came together, and then and then John, Bill, and Lenore, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna ask you 
with regards to some uh, uh, talk a bit about the production itself. A Cosmic well, Christmas is, has become a cult phenomenon, uh, and it's amazing to see how it has impacted both adults and children through multiple generations. Clive, why don't you share with us how did this story come together, and what what was the inspiration for the project? <laughs> Well, it was, as the story goes, it was Patrick <laughs> who came into the studio one day, very excited. He had seen a spaceship. He had seen aliens. You see, he lives on the island. The Toronto has a little island. And he, so he faces the lake. So he watched one night. He saw this light in the sky. And um, he was convinced that it was aliens. And I believe that was the... <laughs> The, the, the seed of the idea to, uh, to make this film. Um, we had up before Cosmic, we had done a lot of smaller projects and we were building a team. There were people that were working with us like Bill and like Charlie Bonifacio, um, Robin Budd, right. who were just so eager to do something bigger and to do something real, to do real animation, because nobody else really in the city was doing it anymore. Even Disney was not in production at that time on anything particularly, you know, anim no animated specials or, or features. So we did, as Bill said, we, we did feel like we were kind of, you know, the next, the next uh, generation. And we were very excited to do it. So that was really the impetus to put all that energy and that effort into Cosmic. And I've got to mention Frank Nissen at this point. He really yeah. should be with us tonight. But Frank came on board early in, in Cosmic Christmas. I started, when we started Cosmic Christmas, I started doing the drawings. I started doing, you know, very, I draw very cartoony, very <laughs> stupid, silly drawings. Frank came in with a very strong visual um, design sense, which was amazing. And I kind of stood back and let that happen. And that was amazing. I mean, what he did was really design the film with between Frank and maybe Louis Cravonia, who was our background artist at the time, who painted all the, all the scenery. I mean, that really is the look of the film. And... Um, right. That's kind of where it all started. And, and everybody was just so extremely excited about it. And it really was such a, it was such a community. The studio was such a community at that time with people interfacing with each other and going into everybody's departments. We were not sitting in front of computers in stacks and rows like that. It was more, it was something that, something between a art school and a lunatic asylum. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but, uh, it was an incredible, incredible environment and in, an incredibly creative environment, you know, and we listened to everybody and we listened to every, everybody had input, you know, we were, we were, I don't think we were even, work, I guess we were working from a, from a, from a, a script. But Frank and I would would uh, do the storyboard. We'd lock ourselves in the storyboard room, you know, for days and days and days, and occasionally came out for for sandwiches. But we'd just bash away at the storyboard, and you know, and um, I don't know. It was it was it was a lot of fun. It was God. it was John, a lifetime. <laughs> It sounds like an intense, uh, an, inse an intense period of time for the studio. John, um, from your perspective and from a production point of view, you know, what were some of the things that influenced you in the work you did and, and that you saw that were influencing overall the look of the, uh, of the, pr of the production? Well, I, w I had come out of uh, working on two features. I'd worked on Tubby the Tuba, where I learned the basics of animation from old Popeye and Mighty Mouse animators. And then I worked on Raggedy Ann and Andy with Richard Williams and, um, and uh, you know, was following up a, a lot of, of uh, Disney animators. And then when uh, uh, Jerry Potterton 
took over the, the animation production. That's my connection to Nelvana was through, uh, through uh, Jerry, who knew Clive, and Clive called him up and said, hey, uh, we have an animator who broke his wrist and we need somebody to come up. And so that's how I wound up there. So I brought in the two year, the two feature, uh, a feature uh, animation uh, 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 background. And when I was there at Nelvana, it, it was a very intense group of artists who were looking to create something and each each animator had a style. You don't see that anymore, and it hasn't been that way since the old 1940s and 50s animators because the animators weren't doing, uh, no, did not have a house style. We were creating the style, but it was each of us. And so when we're, you know, we're, I'm what, 27 years old, uh, and uh, I was one of the older ones there. And, uh, and, and everybody was taking what they, knew and what they loved to do and try to put themselves into the work. And that's what became for an intense period of time from, I would say from, uh, uh, from uh, Cosmic Christmas through uh, Rock and Rule, there was a particular Nelvana style. And it was, it was an, an edited, it was a, there was a, 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 an edginess to it. It was not super slick, but it had an enormous amount of raw energy to it, and if right. it made, and that's and that's basically what made Nelvana Nelvana. It was like, who are these guys up there in Toronto? <laughs> you know, it wasn't Disney, it wasn't Warner Brothers, it wasn't even North American. It was it was there was a combination of European and a just we don't care. We're going to do something different, and that's right. what Nelvana was all about at that time. Right. That that and a lot of uh, drinking at the Skipper. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an important and an important detail. I'm glad that you yeah. got in. Um, Bill, what about what about for you? <clears throat> well, I, I just want to say I actually remember when John John arrived. And he used that expression. What's what are they doing up there in Canada? That that and it, and it really struck me that you were in New York, I presume, at, at yeah. the time, and and you were aware of of something's going on up yeah. in Canada, yeah. uh, which I thought was really really interesting. Yeah. Um, what was that? So as far as the style is concerned, because from my point of view, we were all really, really junior. We were all quite novice. And the style evolved from a combination of, of and as John said, we're, we all had different, uh, slightly different styles. But the style developed of ha, from all of us just coming together. And it, our strengths and weaknesses defined what that style was. And you can see from, from Cosmic Christmas through all the half hour specials, the development of, of what uh, was identifiable as a, a Nelvana style. Um, yeah. L Lenora, from a, from a cinematography standpoint, yeah. um, how, how, did you how, how did you guys approach the, the camera on this film? Well, it, it, it was amazing. Like Clive said, it was built out of like boat parts and rubber bands and all of that. It was pre before the company actually was able to afford to buy an Oxberry. But it really made us creative. So for example, there's one scene that I can remember in A Cosmic Christmas where Peter is rolling down the hill. Well, the, the, turn, the table didn't turn this way. It just went this way or this way. <laughs> Um, and so we're sort of sitting there and said, okay, well, we can figure this out. And me with my mathematical background, and I think it was actually Clive, we ended up, I brought in a breadboard. We taped the background down to the breadboard and then we manually, so you're just doing it frame by frame. It's almost like stop frame animation that we ended up doing for that scene because the camera couldn't do it. Um, you know, and the other thing, you know, uh, and this actually goes into when we, we had the Oxberry, the fade and dissolve on the Oxbury were at the top of the camera and it was manual. So for every, if you were doing a fade in or a fade out or dissolving from one scene to another, it was all in camera. So I had to climb a ladder up to the top 
move it one frame, climb back down. And it was just, it was just phenomenal because once everyone learned that I was climbing up and down this ladder, I had lots of visitors <laughs> in the camera room. <laughs> right. And I honestly have never been fitter because I literally spent, you know, six months climbing up and down a ladder all day long, you know, so it, it was great, but it's just, you work with what you have and I think that that is in the film. I think it comes from the animators that were new to it and just this energy and from me who was new to animation, just figuring out how to do it. Clive, I wanna uh, jump over to you. Obviously, um, you know, there's, there's no limit to the different types of style uh, you, 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 can, you can use in an animated, uh, in, in an animated work. Uh, and you mentioned with regards to the background, I, I watched, I watched the special again, actually this morning, and I was taken by the background work and by the really interesting character designs uh, of, there were, there were a lot of, some of the main characters had a more, what I would kind of consider a more traditional design. And then some of, some of the more odd, odder characters <laughs> had really uh, uh, quite exaggerated styles. How did you, Kind of what was the process of coming up with the different designs, both from a character standpoint and from a background standpoint for the project? Wow, that's a question or three. Um, Frank established the look of the main characters. And those characters, what, what we would try and do was to actually have certain animators stay with certain characters. You can't do that all the time because you get scenes with multiple characters. So who gets that scene? So it, we have different artists drawing the same characters, but using the guides, using the, the, um, the, the designs as closely as they can. And you know what, once it's on the screen and once they're painted all the same colors, the, di the slight differences are not really that noticeable, but the background characters who might appear in one or two scenes only, you know, we can have a bit of fun with, and that's, that's what happens. You know, you, you, you have, you take a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, leeway here and, and, and just try something, try something new. So with so many people working on, the same characters, you're going to get slightly different styles throughout. But you're, um, you're, you're mentioning the background. Louis Cavagna was, was, an, uh, was older than all of us. He'd been in the business for years. He was like a bit of a, a father to us. Um, he'd gone through, uh, he, he had, he had, he was an inventor. A brilliant painter, absolutely beautiful painter, but he was also an inventor. He had patents on the craziest things like bottle tops and, and <laughs> things that twist and turn. And at one point in his career, he was making, um, he was making stop frame animation. And he talked to us about some of the techniques that he used, which were holding things by wires and in order to not see the wire he'd put a voltage through them and the wire would the wire would vibrate so you didn't see it and he brought a lot of those ideas and there a lot of that thinking into the studio so we just had a lot of very creative people. What can I say? You know, I don't know. I forget what the question was, but you know what I mean. Just, <laughs> just talking about how the styles kind of came together. Did, Bill, I, I want to uh, jump over to you. Is, was it your impression? Was it, was it your impression that, um, I mean, everyone who touched the film kind of brought their own backgrounds and ideas uh, certainly a bit to to uh, the style as they were animating what uh, how, how did you approach the work that you were you were doing on it and what do you think you brought from a from a design standpoint to the stuff you you actually worked on gosh um i don't know i you know i 
at that age, I was very cocky and quite sure of myself. Um, and But working on that project, I was surrounded by people who were um, my peers, who were really, really good. And um, what, what I, what, I, I, the, the people that I admired in animation I, at, at the time were my peers, Charlie Bonifacio, Robin Budd, John Celestri. Uh, and, and I think my, I learned, for me, it was still learning. I was still learning a lot. And I remember John particularly uh, doing a little sort of TED talk thing where um, he was talking about his approach to a scene and it was the, the I think the grandmother character and she was painting something and and I just remember you like just doing this really nice um, how you thought it out and timed things and I just remember really distinctly this one motion that you did explaining um, her putting the finishing touches on the star that goes on top of the tree um, I don't know if you remember that but that that was so I was learning from from the people that were around me and that's i think we probably all were learning from each other and that's where that's how the style i came out of that that interaction and clive said we were all feeding off of each other creatively it was, a, it was, it was a bull was, a bullpen i mean you uh, clive uh, clive uh, uh, you and frank were in the uh, uh the storyboard room or the music room as you were calling it then uh, the director's room, you were, you were storyboarding, but then we had the bullpen and that was right outside of there. It was the, was the, it was the general, you know, yeah. uh, room where everybody was there. The animators and the assistants were all there uh, and uh, everything, uh, people were on back, you know, back to back on e with, with the uh, story, uh, uh, the desks were, were butt up against each other. I mean, you basically you could, do a scene and hand it over to your assistant because they were sitting right next right to you. Right there, yeah. And, and it, it was a lot of talk and there was a lot of back and forth. Even had to share exposure sheets. Remember, <laughs> at the time, there'd be one master. And if you were working on a scene, well, uh, you couldn't finish it sometimes because somebody else had the, had the exposure <laughs> sheet from another scene. And so you had to kind of, you know, share. You know, uh, but it, but there was a lot of talking back and forth and just being able to look over each other's shoulder. And it wasn't a matter of gathering together for a a, uh, a, a, a meeting. It was like, uh, would you show me and how I'm going to flip this scene? And, you know, how can I what can I do here? And, you know, how do I make a pose stronger? I mean, all yeah. of that was there. It was a very it was a very communal environment and that's what i think i said earlier on where you know we just interacted all the time and 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 we we overlapped you know there were mm -hmm. there weren't sort of divisions so many divisions of people just going off in the corner and doing something that wasn't allowed you know mm -hmm. everybody had to kind of just join in the party and i think right. that is very much what rubbed off on the production mm -hmm. and the and the the uh, animation that you were talking about about the the grandmother i yeah. was looking at i was looking at that yesterday or whenever i was watching, and it's beautiful little piece of animation <laughs> it, it is really it really is yeah it really is L lenora be proud um, of that thank you. um thank you. speaking uh, uh Speaking of, as Clive says, of the kind of communal nature and, and the team aspect of, of this production, what was it? What was it like for you to uh, work on a project on this project uh, and uh, under the directorship of Clive? Um, it, you know, the whole experience of Cosmic Christmas and the fourteen years that I was at Nelvana were fabulous because um, it was just continually learning, continually getting better, um, and you know, being noticed by um, America, you know, it, like, who is, who is this group that's coming out of Canada? And, you know, when you look at, um, you know, I traveled the world after that, I couldn't go into a studio anywhere in the world where I didn't find somebody who had their roots in Nelvana, you know, I mean, it, 
people traveled, people taught, they learned, you know, just kept moving, moving, moving. And it was just a really, really fabulous group. And, you know, Clive spent a lot of time in the camera room, like because we didn't have, you know, state of the art equipment at the beginning. Um, you know, we were always in there trying to figure out how can we make this a dynamic scene, you know, and I think one of the things is the movement of the, the wise man or the spaceman, whichever you'd like to call them, you know, we wanted them to sort of feel unearthly, you know, obviously, and we ended up doing that by doing a series of cross dissolves between drawings as opposed to you know so it was a combination of a camera in camera effect along with animation mm. and it, it i think it works beautifully it does work very very well um i'm i'm gonna uh, shift gears a little bit here and clive i'm gonna i'm gonna direct this at you just because you're, you're the obvious person to, to take this one um this special really does a fine job of balancing both science and religion, which is not an easy thing. Um, can you share some of the reasoning and inspiration behind how you achieve that dynamic? <clears throat> well, I'm not a religious person by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the, the, the Christmas story of the three wise men is a fabulous story. It's a Christmas story. And really what we did was to take that Christmas story, that idea, and to bring it into the into a into a different um world, into into the current world, and and over overlap the idea of the three wise men and the three aliens. So that's the fairly obvious little little trick that we did. Um but, um, you know, and obviously, and along with spacemen comes science. So there was a natural sort of crossover. And I didn't really, I didn't pay much attention to that. I didn't think, oh, we're doing a religious film here, or there's a religious connotation. Um, we did what came naturally, and, and, and it seemed to work. It, it, all, it, it, it all fitted together very, very comfortably. So. Right. That's about all I can say about religion and science. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did come together very nicely, and 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 you you said the uh, uh, early on here that you you watched the uh, you watched the show again and how well it holds up, and it does, and that's one of the aspects of it. I think that that has held up. Uh, yeah. The show up. Yeah. The show I was obviously. Surprised. I was surprised that we could actually tell such a great story. I, mean, I, think, I think the story works. It really does. I was, I, it brought a tear to my eye. What can I say? It's a very unique uh, Christmas story. I mean, as, as it goes, it had, it had heart. And that's basically all you really want out of a Christmas story, heart. I, you know, I want to, one of the things that I noticed about it is that a, a lot of it um, has this kind of ironic social, like it, no, everybody's <laughs> kind of blasé about Christmas, and it's a little bit cynical. And it, and at the begin, the the characters are are all pretty indifferent about Christmas, and then um, they all at the end there's this delightful realization about what Christmas is. So in in some weird way, that's a, um, somewhat philosophical anyway yeah right but it's um I, I i don't i i don't like it when things get too sappy and i don't think it ever gets sappy and yet it's still touching or um it, it has a really lovely lovely feel to it well there is that thing with you know with the kids and yeah. and you know and and the the, the street kids and, and there are so many elements. There's a, there's a bit of Dickensian. Th See that whole thing about there's a ta there's a British taste to it yeah. that you don't have in America. American stuff have has a completely different take on it, and this has it's Canadian, but it's also very British, you know, in that element to it. Right, right. Um, you've all touched on, uh, um, you know. Uh, pieces that you touched on the film and just in, in general, some of the, its impact on you. But uh, 
if you could, if if you had to uh, uh, point to any one part of the film or any one character, uh, which part of the animation was the most powerful for you and why? Lenora, why don't we start with you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you know, when I re rewatched the film, there, <laughs> there's a scene in there where I made a mistake in camera. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I caught that. And I you can see it. You can see it. It's during the cross dissolving decorating of the Christmas tree. And there is a strand of garland that is way off to the side. You know, and to me, because you know, we were all striving for perfection and we just didn't have time to redo it. And everybody goes, well, it's all cross dissolving anyway, and no one will notice. Well, every single time I watch that film, that's the scene that goes bang in my face. <laughs> well, and right you know, it's not place. really about the animation, but it's, it's there. Yeah. Now you'll all be looking for it. Right. I, ac John I, actually, I actually noticed another thing, and it was the grandmother, when she's sitting down and she's talking about um what you know what they used to do yeah. and there's a cup there's a couple of cells out of order so uh, uh, we're well, gonna, sorry we're gonna about have, that we're gonna sorry have about to that. <laughs> yeah. we're gonna have to reshoot it i'm yeah. sorry well the thing about it is we didn't do we didn't have story we didn't have pencil tests right what yeah we, we didn't pencil tested some things i think some we things, had a but, very primitive but, very it small. Yeah, it, it was still. We didn't do. We didn't do very many pencil tests. We, you did. You did some. You, we didn't had no screenings. If you, no, if you right. had cor you had corrections, then you would look at the stuff. But it's basically my memory of it was seeing it. You know, every now and then when there was a correction to be made, or because we didn't have you. You know, it was still a. It was a negative. You would you would shoot the negative. And then you'd run it on your moviola, right, Clive? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, oh, there, right. you know there was no there was no real there was no screening room. There was no, for Nelvana. That was that was there was nothing other than there was an editing room, right? And uh, and 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 check things out. I, yeah. Anyway, no, it was it was a lot of blind faith. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bill, what about for you? What uh, what was the most powerful part of the film for you, and why? I don't know if powerful is the word. I mean, as far as animation is concerned, I, I really, I have to say John's stuff was this uh, stuff that uh, impacted me the most, just because you, you were so um, so precise in in um, designing your, your timing and, and everything. I, I remember, I, um, I just remember the grandmother and the parents really, really well and, and how strong the animation and how particular it was. And so though that just from an animation point of view, but, but I also really liked, um, what were the three bad kids? Oh, I, oh. Uh, well, it was Martin. John. It was John Halfpenny who did that animation. John I, Halfpenny. I really liked John Halfpenny's stuff. Uh, he just did, he just did this. He got into the, these rough, Roughneck characters that that um, I can't remember what they were called. They were something gang, um, and but uh, I I really really liked what he did with those. And it was the complete opposite feel of your style of animation, John. But but it all integrated. But, but and, and yeah. that was a, that was a, that's the that's a, the charm of Cosmic Christmas. You had characters. You weren't just doing everybody doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean that. Uh, uh, That's the how it that, how that, it that, that was yeah. that was John Halfpenny's personality coming out in the kids. Exactly. Yeah, yeah he did right. some very funny stuff. Where they're crossing the road after that <laughs> incident with the uh, yes, with the, uh, with the guy yeah. who's collecting the money. Yeah, yeah, that was a very funny thing. I th there's a scene where I mean, where Marvin is in the water when he's splashing yeah. around. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty intense. That animation, yeah. I think Frank did that. No, I, I think. No, I don't know. I, th I, I, I was thinking maybe. Dave Thrasher. Mm. Oh, that could be. Might have been. Might have been. I think it was yeah. Dave Thrasher yeah. working yeah. on that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's pretty intense. Yeah. It's and it's beautifully animated. Yeah. The other scene I was going to say was where where Marvin is on the bike and he yeah, and yeah. He takes. 
I we there was a lot of um, rumors after that that um, Spielberg's ET was uh, <laughs> for that scene where <laughs> Marvin is actually takes off and is flying in the air. Um, yes, a lot of people go wait Absolutely. a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, Clive the the. the Cosmic Christmas has been a fan favorite for generations now. Yeah. Um, what do you think is the most is most relevant today uh, about about the the special? It, whether overall or if there's any one particular scene or character, what do you, why do you think this resonates uh, uh, through to today? I think partly because people really love hand animation. I mean, there is so many. So much animation now is computer generated, machine generated, and going back to seeing something like Cosmic and seeing how it was just crafted frame by frame, I think that's part of the joy of of the film. Um, you know, when you when you're drawing every single frame, you're thinking about every single frame, and you're thinking about every single line, and you know you're your passion and your love goes into every little piece with digitally animated characters. Once they're designed and you move them, you know, they're kind of set, they have their own life. They are separate. But um, anyway, I think it's, it's, it's the craft of the animation that is partly what is uh, still very special about this special. And and as we've all said, the story still holds up, and I think it has, you know, a nice, simple, clear message that will work as well today as as it will in fifty years' time. Did you use based on that at the time that you made that? Were you thinking that this is going to be a special that? could have that type of impact was it just kind of another project that you were you know happy and and uh, well it wasn't you know enjoy doing but what what was the thinking at the time with regards to where this might end up so to speak uh, I don't, uh culturally we didn't, didn't i didn't think past the actual production um i didn't think of whether or not it was going to make us successful um we you've got to remember that in those days we were we were not financed. We didn't, we were working really, you know, hand to mouth in a sense. We financed this through, uh, we had a, 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 a small group of investors. We had the bank behind us. And then, and then we were lucky enough to, to Michael was lucky enough to get a deal, um, a sale. We had obviously the CBC money, but, we didn't know where we would go from there. So this project really was, it was our life for a year. And I, we, I just wanted to make it as, as good as we could, tell the story as best we could, and just make the project as fantastic as we could. And I, yeah, I believe that people would, would like it i did i i i had a great hopes for it that that it would be very successful i felt that it would be very successful and i think it was to to a good degree well looking back on it now the fact we're 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 meeting with and and and, and talking with with a large <clears throat> group of people it certainly certainly feels like it's been successful and relevant all these years uh later um We've got we've got a handful of minutes more. We've got some questions that are coming in from the audience, and so I want to I want to jump over to that. Uh, this is this is not directed to anyone in particular, so I'll kind of uh, let you guys uh, jump in. So the the, the question is uh, uh, following: This movie changed my family's life and inspired me to be an artist. What's one piece of advice you could give to those looking to make magic that people can appreciate over time? like a cosmic Christmas? Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we made the film 
from our hearts, really. I mean, we did what we thought was the right thing to do. It was something that we that we believed in, and we didn't know how successful it was going to be. We had no idea. We've been really kind of struggling in a sense for years. Um, and this was a big, big, big leap for us. And as many of the projects subsequently were all kind of leaps and rock and roll eventually was a huge leap and it was, it almost brought the company down. You know, you've got to believe in what you're doing. You've got to follow your heart. It's a very corny thing to say. I know, but <laughs> You know, do what you love, and 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 put everything into it, and it will pay off. It will. What, what, John, Lenore, Bill? What about what, what? What would you have to say about this? Well, I, well, I think wondering. I think Clive sort of hit it on the head. Is it, you know, is it? It's a word I think that's overused now when people talk about their careers, but it's passion. And I don't think there was a person in on that film mm -hmm. that wasn't absolutely passionate about doing the best that they could do. Yeah. And for a variety of reasons, we, you know, we wanted this little Canadian company to be successful that nobody has ever heard of. You know, so I think it's that. And you know, I as I said, it's an overused word now in the industry, but back then in 1976 or 77 it was like that's exactly what it was it was a passionate group of and i wouldn't necessarily call us professionals i think we were all learning we were all learning the craft um, we were toddlers you know yeah, yeah exactly little little babies and i yeah. think it comes through in the film i think you can see that I was going to say, I was going to phrase it as simply, there wasn't an ounce of cynicism in that studio. There was nobody grumbling about, it was hard work, but nobody was grumbling. It was all very um, positive energy. Uh, the, the artists took ownership of the work that they were doing. You know, I mean, yeah. because everybody was putting themselves into the work. And every time you saw the drawing or you saw a scene, you know, later on, um, you know, uh, you could tell who did what because that artist came through on the screen. It wasn't a matter of it being homogenized and follow, everybody was doing their work. It was like, you know, as, as Clive would say, you know, everybody was cast. Yeah. you know, for characters as much as well as they possibly could be. And right. everybody took ownership of their work. You know. Got it. Um, another question that has, has come in, looking back, were there any artists, TV shows, or films at that time or before that inspired your work while working on this project? Ooh. Bill Titler for me. The, uh, the 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 classic uh, animator who did uh, Night on Bald Mountain, did Dumbo, the baby Dumbo, did Grumpy, uh, uh, did, uh, what, what was his other thing? Um, oh, uh, uh, Stromboli. It was, the, it was the timing, it was the finesse, the exact uh, controlled exaggeration. And that's, you know, that's what got me, you know, and I would always look to his work continually for that. Any, anyone else that I want to share? Well, so many, so many beautiful films are out there mm -hmm. and were out there. Obviously, you know, Disney was the kind of the standard when we, when we were starting Nelvana. Um, and I was brought up on Disney films, um, which I loved. But I think there was a short film that actually got me intrigued in animation when I was art, at art school in England. And it was uh, Richard Williams' short film called The Little Island. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing to do with this style, the cosmic Christmas style. But it was just a delightful little film that made me realize that they were moving drawings. I thought, wow, 
<laughs> How do you do that? How do you move drawing on a piece of paper? So that that really excited me, and that got that got me into my first job in in England, where I worked at a tiny little studio um, called Group Two, and we worked on the Beatles series and the Lone Ranger series. That was my intro into into animation, but uh, it didn't answer the question. But I thought you should. <laughs> well, I mean, what what did were you guys influenced at all, for example, by like the early work of Ralph Bakshi? No. <laughs> that's the, that's the no. definitive. No. <laughs> that, I mean, that, that's interesting because that was around the same era. But yeah. I, I'm I'm with Clive on that. <laughs> No. <laughs> I was, interestingly, I really liked uh, John and Faith Hubley. Does anybody remember them? And yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. called oh, yeah. Windy Day that I, about two little girls just playing. And I just really was enchanted by their stuff. And I, and I, I, I don't think it shows in anything that I've done, but, but I found that really, really enchanting. But Yellow Submarine was also something that was... Uh, completely different style mm -hmm. um i think i was always interested in different styles though to the potential in animation to do whatever right right yeah uh, we've got like just a couple minutes left clive i got i've got one another question came in that i want to direct to you in the last little bit of time we have here what should one do to start a studio like nilvana and, and what makes a great studio oh wow times have changed Times have changed. I don't know if I would ever um, recommend starting a studio <laughs> like Nelvana. I mean, we didn't start the. We. I mean, it was just three of us, and it and it grew. It grew from just you know three, and I. I think I had an assistant after about two years. Um, but the tools are so different now. The technology is so different. I, I just really, I'm not sure how to answer that question because I, I would say decide what you want to do. What, what is the, what is the end goal? Is it, is it, is it a, um, is it a, a broadcast? Is it a TV film? Is it is it TV production or is it um, web production? Because the tools are all the tools are different. You know, there's a variety of different ways to approach everything. So I don't think anybody really wants to start a company like Nelvan. I don't think you could do it. I I don't think you can do it now. I Go actually on. think there's. I think there is opportunity. <clears throat> going to be different. The, it, the opportunity, what you don't want to do is start Nelvana as it is now. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But start small. It's just the thing that the thing is to just whatever it is you want to do. It's small. It's three people. You start with three people with a passion. And that's what that's what Nelvana, the birth of Nelvana was three people with a with a, a passion. And, that, and that's it. That to me, that's the formula. And I've seen that work. I've and seen and a work. credit card. Yeah. Right. Credit yeah. Card. I did, yeah. Well, this is well. This is oh yeah. No, there I can't tell you anything. <laughs> um, we've. Uh, it's it's actually unfortunately it's 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 that time and uh, we've we've come to the end of our time uh, getting together today. I I really could spend the rest of the evening talking to you guys about uh, about your about this project and other stuff that you've done uh but uh on behalf of uh, animation world network awn.com i want to thank everyone for joining us this really really wonderful panel uh and um i want to so i want to thank i want to thank you individually clive john bill and lenora for for really sharing sharing some wonderful insights and uh, just let let bringing letting us kind of bringing us inside this uh, your 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 world on this project for so, from from that many years ago, uh, I'd also like to wish Nelvana a happy fiftieth anniversary. Uh, that's the, as I said, that's no small feat, and uh, the studio continues continues to put out some of the best animated 
fair that's that's made today. Be sure to right. visit nirvana.com. Follow the studio on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram for more exciting celebratory events and all sorts of things that are going to be going around, around on in and around the anniversary. Uh, everyone, again, thank you very, very much for joining us. And I wish you and your families a happy holidays. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank, thank, you, thank you, John you. and Lenora and Bill. It's, it's great, great seeing, seeing everybody. Talk. Yeah, and, great speech. Just, one, just yeah. one little thing. When people go back and watch Cosmic Christmas again, I think they'll have some background and I think they'll watch it in a slightly different light. So please enjoy Cosmic Christmas. Thanks, everybody. Take Thank care. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.